Hi guys, so welcome to today's video. Today we are doing our March wrap up and April TBR. I did not read as many books. Well, okay, let me pause. I read a decent amount of books. Okay, that's a lie too. I'm just gonna show you the books I read. And keep in mind, I am in school, so it makes it a lot harder to read, but I feel like I've read a pretty good amount for someone who's a senior in college trying to get through. But we're gonna get into it. The first book we're gonna talk about is Air of Fire. I started this at the end of February and then finished it in March, so I'm counting it towards my March wrap up. There it is. I don't like to go into too much detail about books like who are in the middle of series because I don't want to wait, pause. Here are some of my books missing from my background. I found them. I don't know why they were on the floor. I don't like to go into too much details about books that are in like series and technically this is like the fourth book in the series of Throne of Glass and it had a very slow beginning in my opinion. I think most of her books do but I ended up rating it four stars. I ended up falling in love with a character that I did not think I was gonna like and I love when I have like a switch in a character like that. I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't read the whole series yet so just know if you want to get the Throne of Glass series, I totally recommend it. It is so good. The reason it's taking me so long to read it though is because I am in school and I'm going to read the Tangent Read and the Kingdom of Ash last book when I'm out of school for the summer. Well, out of school permanently. I'm a fucking senior. But you all know what I mean. Definitely recommend the series as a whole. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Bromance Club. I read this on my Kindle. The book is about a male... What was his name? this character named Gavin and him and his wife are on like the what's the word brink brink bridge I don't know they're about to get a divorce and he's like freaking out he does not want to lose her but his friends basically make him join their book club and it's a romance book club fill of like all these like top alpha males in Nashville all the guys in this club are famous celebrities or like athletes and all this stuff and they basically just have like a romance book club after he joins the book club they pick a book that kind of like kind of help him save his marriage like a romance book that helps him save his marriage and it's honestly it was really cute I loved the idea of it I gave it a 3.75 stars I just thought it was a really cute romance book I totally would recommend it if you're looking for a very quick read I have never really seen a romance book from a guy's perspective like that before and it was so it was so sweet. I honestly loved it so much. Okay, the next one I read is Butcher and Blackbird. This was for a book club I'm in right now, and this is the book we read this month, and I gave this one a four stars, I think. It's about two serial killers who only really kill bad people. They have like an annual game every year where they try and hunt down this bad person and be like the first to kill them out of the two and it's honestly really cute and they end up like falling for each other the book though it has a lot let me just tell y'all right now the trigger warnings in this book are insane i'm just gonna read them really quickly <clears throat> content and trigger warnings first page and look how like eyeballs and eye sockets amateur surgery skin ornaments chainsaws axes knives scalps a lot of sharp objects accidental cannibalism not so accidental cannibalism Questionable use of mummified corpse, lobotomized manservant, ill-advised use of kitchen appliance. I'm sorry about the cookies and cream, ice cream. I'm not really, y'all. That scene is crazy. Detailed sex scenes, which include but are not limited to rockworming, rough sex, praise kink, anal, adult toys, choking, spitting, dumb, slash, sub interactions, genital piercing. Reference to parent neglect and child abuse, parent parental loss, references to child sexual assault, not in detail. There's a book about serial killers, so there's generally some messed up murder and chaos, and she delivered with that. I am someone who can't handle, like, gory stuff. I can't watch horror, not horror, I can't, I, I'm just not good with, like, bloody, gory, disgusting things. I don't know how I managed to get through this book, but if you're someone who's, like, sensitive to gross things, I don't know, I am too, and I managed to get through it. Some parts where I was like, but I was fine. Like I said, it's basically just two serial killers who meet up annually to and kill bad people and they end up falling for each other and the romance in is actually pretty cute for two serial killers who do some really fucked up things. The romance in was really cute. I liked their banter so much. I think I gave this a four stars, maybe 4.5 even. I would totally recommend this if you are able to handle that kind of stuff. The next three books, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about because it's for another video, but I just wanna share like what they're about and all that. It basically did a boyfriend picks my reads. We're not gonna go into too much detail about these books and how I feel because I have not finished reading all of them. One of the books I read is called Hinch and the vibe I get from this book was, if you've ever seen the Marvel movies, and there was like one movie where it's like, yeah, you guys are the 
you know, save us and the bad guys, but you cause us so much damage in the process. That's kind of what this book is about. It's kind of like the bad side. Mar it's not about Marvel at all, but that's just kind of like what I was thinking about when I was reading it. The main character got injured by a superhero while they were, the superhero was fighting like a supervillain or whatever. And so she's basically not gonna be able to walk normal for the rest of her life because of it. And so she ends up working for like one of the worst supervillains ever and using the data she gets about how the superheroes cause more damage than good and basically using that data to help the supervillain take down the good guys and ruin their lives. Very interesting perspective. I gave it a three points. I think I gave it 3.5, 3.75 because, and I will go into more details about this in the video, but it seemed like we were supposed to have such a like emotional connection with the supervillain and the main character. There was like no connection between the two. Like I, we barely got any moments with them. And if we did, it was like a glimpse, like, oh my God, he touched me, blah, blah, blah. Like, The romantic connection it wasn't it like i was like i couldn't even tell throughout the whole book i was like are we supposed to are like are they a thing or not i haven't even rated this book yet because i just i don't know what to rate it because it's so good this is billy summers by stephen king now pause i don't do horror I have never read a Stephen King book. This is not one of his classic horror books. This is more like mystery thriller, basically about this hitman and he is one of the best snipers around. He is like the other book I talked about. He only kills bad people and like he has to make sure they are bad before he kills them. He kind of wants to get out of the game, but then he gets this offer of a lifetime to do one more shot. They'll like give him millions of dollars and he's like, well, let me just do this last one and I'll use that million dollars to just like run away and be done. It's gonna be his last one and everything goes wrong and I need stuff that ha okay how do I- I even like know where to start because I'm just like so overwhelmed there's so much that happens in this book that like I don't even know where to start. All of that happens within like the first 100, 150 pages and I'm like so what's the rest of the book gonna be about? And you meet these new characters who I just fell in love with and you felt like such a strong connection with. I loved Billy Summers so much. I loved his character. There's another character that comes in like halfway through and I fell in love with her And there's another character that came in. I fell in love with him like god the ending the ending will fuck you up Those are all the books that I read for March. It wasn't a lot I know but I again am a student I'm trying to get through my senior year between school class well, homework class my part-time job and doing YouTube like it's hard to find time to read and it, when I do, I really immerse myself in these books. And I feel like this is actually a really good reading month. Like I honestly enjoyed all the books I read. I'm currently in the middle of, I was hoping to finish it by the end of March, but it is currently March 31st and I just don't think that's gonna happen. I'm currently reading Sith. This will probably be in April's wrap up about a world where there's no hunger, no disease. Like everything is perfect. I want, you can't really die naturally anymore. Like it's just such a, new world concept. They have these things called Siths. Go around and glean people because they have to make sure the population doesn't get too high. So these people, Siths, <laughs> I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying this. Our two main characters, Rowan and Citra. I don't even know, I'm just gonna, I've been calling her Citra. It's C-I-T-R-A. Citra and Rowan are chosen to be Siths and they have to like train and they kind of have to master the art of taking lives. And if they mess up, it could affect their own. It's crazy. I'm not doing a good job at explaining it because I'm only, like, I'm not even, I think I'm barely halfway through, maybe almost halfway through. And so I don't really know how to explain it too much. It'll probably be in the ap Apple, hello. April wrap up and I will definitely go into more detail about it then when I know more about it. Honestly, a lot of videos from my TBR when I talk about them, I don't know much about them because I haven't read them. I've just read the back, so. The yeah, next book, I have to look it up on Goodreads because this book is for my book club. This is the book of the month we're reading in April and it's called Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I don't know if I'm saying that right and I'm so sorry if I'm not. This book hasn't even come out yet. It comes out April 2nd, I think. I don't even know really what it's about, so I'm just going to read this thing. You want to put in two times two speed by holding the thing down. I'm pretty sure you can do that to speed this up. It says, Justin has a curse and thanks to a Reddit thread, it's now all over the internet. Every woman he dates goes on to find their soulmate the second they break up. A woman slides into his DMs with the same problem, they come up with a plan. They'll date each other and then break up. Their curses will cancel each other's out and they'll both go out to find the love of their lives. It's a bonkers idea and it just might work. Emma hadn't planned to that her next assignment as a traveling nurse would be in Minnesota, but she and her best friend agree that dating Justin is too good of an opportunity to pass up, especially when they get to rent an adorable cottage on a private island on Lake Minnetonka. 
Minitonica. I can't say the whole word. It's supposed to be a quick fling just for the summer, but when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings, they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected, including catching real feelings for each other. What if this fate has actually brought them has brought the perfect pair together? I think it sounds cute. I think it's gonna be a nice free dive before the summer, so I am really excited to read that. And again, that will be my April wrap up, so I will share my opinions on it, maybe give a better explanation of what it's about. Probably not though, because I'm really bad at explaining things. I could have swore I brought it, but I guess I didn't. But I'm going to read Queen of Shadows, which is the book after Air of Fire. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil anything. Also, I really don't know what it's about. Probably, again, not going to read the Tangent Read and the Kingdom of Ash until after I graduate, which I graduate May 3rd. That's fine. I just did not want to read those three books while I was in school still because that would have been, I feel like, a nightmare. Really difficult. And probably would have put me in a reading slump because I would... It would just be a lot. So I'm waiting till after I graduate to finish those, but I am gonna probably read Queen of Shadows maybe towards the end of the month. Also, I have finals at the end of the month. So I'm trying not to overwhelm my TBR this month because I have finals, so the end of senior year, so I really need to be focusing on school. I only have a few books on my April TBR and maybe I'll read more, maybe I'll read none of these books, but these are the goal, these are the books I'm hoping to read. The next book I'm gonna talk about that I wanna read is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I think I'm gonna read this on my Kindle. And so the next book I'm gonna talk about, I'm also gonna read that on my Kindle, but this one, it says, I'm gonna read off Goodreads because again, I really don't know what it's about, but I've just kept here, I keep hearing so many good things about it. So. I'm gonna restart because I'm so confused right now. In this rom-com about rom-coms, in the spirit of Cassie West and Jen Bennett, a hopeless romantic teen attempts to secure a happily ever after with her forever crush, but finds herself reluctantly drawn to the boy next door. Perpetual daydreamer Liz gave her heart to Michael a long time ago, but her cool, aloof, forever crush never really saw her before he moved away. Now that he's back in town, Liz will do whatever it takes to get back on his radar and maybe snag him as a prom date. Even befriend Wes Bennett, the annoyingly attractive next door neighbor, might seem like a print prime candidate for romantic comedy fantasies, but Wes has only been a pain in Liz's butt since they were kids. Pranks involving frogs and decapitated lawn gnomes do a potential- do not a what? Pranks involving frogs and decapitated lawn gnomes do not make a potential boyfriend. Yet somehow Wes and Michael are hitting it off, which means Wes is Liz's end. But as Liz and Wes scheme to get Liz noticed by Michael so she can have her magical prom moment, she's shocked to discover that she likes being around Wes. And as they continue to grow closer, she might re-examine everything she thought she knew about love and rethink her own ideas about happily ever after should look like. So it sounds like... This girl has a crush on a guy and she really wants him to notice her and so she uses someone who he's friends with to get close to him and then she ends up falling for the friend. That's what I got from that. I guess I should have read that before I even bothered reading that whole thing to you guys because that's basically what the gist is, I think. Anyway, sounds cute. My booktuber girlies, Haley, Destiny, and Sarah, they all rate, well, Destiny and Sarah gave it four and Haley gave it five stars, so. And the book girlies we trust. And the last book on my April TBR is Divine Rivals. And I've heard a lot of good things about this book. It is on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm obviously gonna read on my Kindle. And if it's just that good, I might get to pick up a real copy just to put it on my bookshelf. I actually started this book and then I ended up, why did I stop reading it? I think because I, oh, because I started filming the boyfriend video. So that was technically, I started in March, but I only got to chapter three. So we're gonna try and finish it in April. This is, I'm pretty sure a fantasy book. So on Goodreads, it says, when two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection, they must face the depths of hell in a war among gods to seal their fate forever. After centuries of sleep, the gods are warring again, but 18 year old Iris Winnow just wants to hold her family together. Her mother is suffering from addiction and her brother is missing from the front lines. Her best bet is to win the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. To combat her worries, Iris writes letters to her brother and slips them beneath her wardrobe door, where they vanish into the hands of Roman Kit, her cold and handsome rival at the paper. When he anonymously writes Iris back, the two of them forge a connection that will follow Iris all the way to the front lines of battle for her brother, the fate of mankind, and love. It sounds cute. Again, the book girl is all rated it super high, and I am really excited to get into this. So far, like, even though I'm only on chapter three, it was very good. The only reason I did stop reading it, like I said, was to start the boyfriend video, and I'm honestly so excited to read it. It sounds so good. You guys will find out more about it in my April wrap up. So that is the end of today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys have read any of these books, let me know in the comments how you feel about them. And I will see you guys in the next video.